Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? And welcome back to the channel. Most of all, here with Cinema King Productions. And I'm very excited to tell you guys that, hey, we are back. And I know it's been a minute, but hey, you know, things happen. If y'all have been following me on Instagram, y'all know what had happened with my current uh, computer. It unfortunately had crashed. And I'll be talking about that in a later live stream on real time. Uh, if y'all haven't been watching any of the episodes, make sure you click the link in the description below and watch any of the episodes that you might have missed. Um, but anyway, so that has been uh, its own thing. So I've been on a little hiatus of creating content and stuff like that, but things are going to be coming out soon, I promise. So uh, I told myself, you know what, the show must go on and we're going to continue with that. So. Today, I'm very excited to be unboxing, and I know I'm a little late to the train or the bandwagon, but today, yes, we're gonna be unboxing the anamorphic 50 millimeter F1.8 for Micro Four Thirds from Siri, Siri? I don't know, but let's get into it, shall we? So thanks again for watching and uh, I'm really excited for this you guys because this, uh, as y'all know, I'm sure y'all have been hearing about this revolutionary lens for a Micro Four Thirds camera body like the GH5, like the GH4 um, or any of the other uh, body cameras with that attachment, um, but also for Sony cameras and uh, I believe there's another type, I don't remember exactly. but What's revolutionary about this lens is that yes, it is a true anamorphic 1.33 times lens. Um, I don't want to go into the specs, but basically it gives you the image that a true filmmaker longs for. And there's a whole history behind anamorphic, why they came about, how they were incorporated into mainstream film. I'm not gonna get into that. I am, <laughs> I am not gonna get into that, but um, I will say the image that you get is the anamorphic look, the iconic lens flares, right? Uh, when you have a light source going right into the lens, you get that beam of light. Um, Moment has, and of course other companies as well, but Moment was getting popular uh, with their anamorphic lens uh, right here. It's also a 1.33 times uh, stretch. Um, and of course, naturally, when you put that kind of image onto the sensor, it is very much squeezed. So you have to go into post-production and de-squeeze it uh, to get the right aspect ratio, which is 2.35 to 1. Um, very excited about this. And uh, I know I shouldn't have been dropping so much on it, but it is something that I want for my future projects. Uh, short films and need your feet and even feature films to incorporate this look um, It's very cinematic uh, But again the cinematography is supposed to help tell the story even further, right? So without further with uh, So without any further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this guy Get out our trusty knife Yeah, and let's do this well, first, actually, let me switch cameras from this guy. I'm gonna go and connect the up close one real quick. All right, so now we have this angle right here. We can have plenty of space to work with, get some really nice close ups of that. So now let's go ahead and take out the trusty knife and open this box up. Mm. 
They have really taped this thing. My god. I just hope I'm not cutting into anything else. I was lucky enough to um, get this on eBay and it was at a reduced price than what uh, retail is. Of course, if y'all been following the campaign, it was on Indi uh, Indiegogo. Uh, there was the early bird pricing and then there was the uh, another price bracket and then there was the retail. This was cheaper than the retail, so I'm very happy about that. Let's go ahead and take it out. Bubble wrapped. Oh. There you are. And uh, there it is. The Siri 50 1.8 anamorphic lens right there and now before we open it I have to say like I said before that I'm very excited about this because of the look and feel that you get from anamorphic lenses that's what creates the cinematic experience when you're viewing a film it has that wide aspect ratio um, you have the lens flares what I didn't talk about is that you know the bokeh right any light source that's behind your subject in the background whenever you're not focused on it uh, creates that bokeh and a typical lens creates it uh, to be more circular with the anamorphic they're more oval so that is something else to keep in mind uh, just to give it that extra look and feel so anyway I'm just very excited about this guys here we go. Bismillah. Brand spanking new. We got paperwork, accessories. What comes with this? Ah, the pouch and paperwork instructions. And now the main attraction. Oh. Inshallah. You are wrapped beyond wrapping. <laughs> okay. Wee! Man, you have got some weight there, buddy. Inshallah. Now, something to keep in mind is that this lens is 100% manual, meaning there are no electronic components that connect to the camera. So if you are shooting like on a GH5, uh, you have to put it in the shoot without lens mode, or have that turned on, so that way it can recognize uh, the lens, uh, or at least still film with it. Um, it glides very smoothly. I'm very, very happy about that. As a person who has been very much enjoying the vintage types of lenses, uh, that is going to be coming out soon as well. A short film about, you know, uh, developing the story. Um, you know, having a greater appreciation for the technology that we have now is based on the technology of the past, right? And it evolved from it. And so I encourage anybody in any, you know, form of media or art, creativity, um, if there is a previous usage of your tool to tell the story, dive into it. So for example, if you're a photographer or a filmmaker, use actual film, you know, and have it developed. So that way you really appreciate what, you know, the digital cameras do nowadays in just an instant, right? It's to really hone the craft and to really uh, be more uh, intentional with uh, what you're using instead of oh I can just redo it and just take it again no you want to be professional you want to be precise and that in itself is a discipline so I highly encourage that and so as part of this journey of mine that I've been experiencing I've been more um, what's the word 
I'm more keen on using more older lenses, ones that are more vintage, because uh, that way you are more precise. So having lenses that are not mechanical, or rather are not electronic, but mechanical, um, I just feel like they have more nostalgia to it. Um, so this one does not have, it's, you know, it's a D-click aperture and the, the focus is very smooth. It's very, very smooth. I'm very, very impressed with that. But yeah, this has been really exciting. I'm very, very happy about this. Um, you can see it's, you know, it's got some weight to it. It's really nice. It's a very solid build made out of, I think, aluminum. Um, oh, oh, that's beautiful. Look at that glass right there. If you can tell, it's uh, that element right there is very, very uh, ovally. <laughs> and I can't wait to put on to my GH5 and start making films using this lens. Um, I did hear that they are going to be coming out with more lenses. So this is a 50 millimeter prime, um, but I heard they are going to be coming out with a 35 millimeter prime as well. And I think they should even go wider than that uh, just so they can have a nice set for any filmmaker or photographer. You can't take photos with anamorphic, of course. It is just a nice wide panorama, if you will, uh, of an angle. But yeah, man, <laughs> this is just incredible. Uh, like, and the price point, let me talk about that for a second. Usually, anamorphics are just hella expensive, right? They get the Michael Bay look of, you know, lens flares or J.J. Abrams. You know, they both are notorious for using uh, lens flares and, and anamorphic lenses, like all filmmakers are um, in that style. But uh, the price point of an anamorphic lens can reach up to the tens of thousands of dollars, like $30,000 I think is like the highest I've ever seen. Um, I'm sure there's more than that. But as the price goes lower, you get to, you know, find less and less of a variety. And so, um, there are some that are $10,000, there are some that are $3,000 from different brands, of course, at least those that can connect to like Micro Four Third cameras. Um, but then these guys came out, S uh, Siri, Sir everybody's saying Siri or Siri, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, forgive me. Um, and these guys are known for camera lenses, adapters and tripods and accessories and things like that, but then they dropped this ball last year saying, oh, we are developing a, an anamorphic lens for your Micro Four Thirds camera, for your Sony E-mount cameras, and I forgot, again, the other one. Um, but I'm very excited to use this on my GH5 with my Zion Crane gimbal uh, to get those sweet, sweet shots uh, to help tell the story more and more. Oh man, so you will be expecting a short film coming soon, and I have nothing else more to talk about. Um, this has been a great investment, I think, uh, for myself, and I'm very excited to, to use this. I know it's going to be not exactly 50 millimeters, because after you de-squeeze it, it's going to be like somewhere around 37 and a half millimeters, um, but because it is a micro four thirds, you have to double the length um, so that way it's actually true to full frame but uh, still it's it's very nice to know that these tools are becoming more and more available to us than they were before so that we can tell our stories in a more engaging way and uh, at a much more affordable rate so with that I'm gonna go ahead and end this video of this unboxing if y'all enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe make sure you hit that post notification down below so you are notified when we are going to be uh posting again and until next time i will see y'all in the next one peace out